After round 20, the verdict is in and the match review panel has a message for the Selwood brothers. What's good for the backyard isn't good for the footy field. Hello everyone and welcome to our weekly look at the MRP's findings. Joining me is the panel's chairman, Mark Fraser, and we'll start with one that's sure to cause plenty of discussion. Joel Selwood reprimanded for unnecessary contact with an injured player, that player being, of course, his older brother, Adam. Mark, you assess this as reckless, low impact and body contact. Yeah, it's a reportable offence um, to make unreasonable or unnecessary contact with an injured player. In this case, um, there's the head collision and then Joel gets up and pushes his brother uh, Adam over. Um, the thing with that is he, he doesn't know whether he is sort of severely injured. He may have a neck injury or broken ribs um, and that action um, can be potentially dangerous. So with that, we don't believe that he has intentionally done it, has intentionally pushed an injured player, but he should know that because of that collision that there's the potential for um, an injury to be there. So it's a reckless grading and low into the body. Now, let's be honest, they've probably done this to each other thousands of times before growing up. You couldn't just write this one off as brothers being brothers? No, unfortunately not. Because of that potential for injury, um, if there was broken ribs or if there was um, something wrong with his neck there, then that can certainly cause major problems, so something like that. So we, we have to grade it as such. You did grade it only as low impact. How close were you to letting it slide from the, from the point of view of how severe the impact was. Oh, look, if it was any other player other than his brother, you wouldn't have any issues with it. But because it's the, the brothers, it makes a bit of a difference, I suppose, from the way people uh, view it. But um, we think that's a, an unnecessary act. OK, and the fact that it was just the shove and not the bump, uh, any less chance of causing serious injury? I oh, know, um, as I said, if he had broken ribs or if he had a neck injury, um, so a broken neck, um, that could cause severe problems. OK, next, a pair of off-the-ball incidents that have been looked at. First of all, Port Adelaide's Hamish Hartlett given one week with an early guilty plea for his hit on Hawke Cyril Rioli. After an investigation, the MRP assessed this as intentional, medium impact and body contact. Uh, Mark, without any really clear vision here, can you explain what you've found happened? Yeah, you can see that the two are involved in the centre area there and then Rioli goes to ground. Um, we di did an investigation and that came back um, with uh, enough information for us to think that it was warranting a, a charge of a, an intentional strike to the, um, to the midriff, I suppose. What did the investigation involve? Um, it involves both players, so um, an investigator calls both players um, and then speaks to them and gets their side of events. Um, and from that information, the investigator gives us his findings and, um, yeah, we decide from there as to whether to proceed with the charge or not. And were there any umpires that saw anything in, in this No, incident? no umpires with that one. Um, they were just sort of uh, obviously looking at other things and so there was nobody contacted from the umpiring department. And from the other Sunday afternoon clash between the Western Bulldogs and Richmond, Ryan Hargrave has also been handed a one-week sanction with an early guilty plea for striking Daniel Jackson. This was intentional, low impact and high contact. Uh, once again, Mark, the vision not all that conclusive here. What happened? No, you can see there that um, Hargrave swings an arm um, and it makes high contact. We had a medical um, from the, uh, the club and that showed that there had been that forceful high contact. Um, uh, but Jackson does get up and run to the back to uh, remonstrate with Hargrave later on. Um, but we thought there was enough in, in that for a charge for striking. Just from having a look at the vision, it looked like Jackson may have instigated the contact. Does Hargrave get any leniency because he was defending himself? No, we cannot give leniency in that regard. Um, we just go by what we see there and um, even if it is retaliation, we have to charge. And on the flip side of the coin, only low impact. Um, Jackson was down for a little while. Did you consider gra grading it higher? Um, we didn't consider grading it high just because of the medical that we received and you, you do see him whilst he's on the ground he gets up and runs forward then so um, we thought that there was only enough for a low grading there. OK, there were no other further suspensions out of the weekend action but we'll have a look at some of the players who have been cleared of wrongdoing. First, Liam Picken with no case to answer for this tackle on Brett Deledio. Mark, how did you assess this one? Yeah, um, Deledio has the ball and Picken has both, arm, uh, both arms pinned. Um, as he's taking him to ground, Deledio tries to kick it um, and unfortunately there's that sort of uh, uh, going to ground with the tackle. Um, there was no forceful high contact with that and the medical came back clear so we didn't think that he had a case to answer with that. These ones, we know you keep an eye on these from week to week. Does this basically come down to the fact that Deledio wasn't hurt? Had he been harmed, perhaps Picken in a little bit of trouble there? Yeah, um, with that sort of tackling and, and uh, driving into the ground, you do have to be uh, very aware of that. Um, and there, there was the potential there um, for more damage if he had gone through with it uh, a little bit harder, I would imagine. Uh, to the Twilight game now, and Lockie Hansen was worse for wear after he clashed here with Nathan Lovett-Murray. Uh, but Nathan 
Love it, Murray. Not in the wrong either, Mark. No, with this one, um, both players are going for the ball. And then at the, the very last half a step even, um, Murray sort of... Uh, I suppose, um, just turns side on and um, there's forceful high contact of both players. So Hanson actually makes contact to, to Murray High and um, uh, Murray High to Hanson. So um, we thought that that was um, sort of a, an incident where there was no realistic alternative way for Murray to compete for the ball. And finally, let's have a look at this incident involving Greater Western Sydney yeah, ruckman Jonathan Giles. Once again, Mark, no case to answer here. No, here it comes down to a little bit of a level of force. Um, with that, uh, free kick was paid for the high contact. The medical came back clear, um, and so we thought that the free kick was an appropriate penalty. That's all we have for you this week on The Verdict. Players cited have until 11 o'clock Tuesday morning to decide if they want to challenge their charges. A full report on all the incidents can be found on afl.com.au. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.